explain it. But I'm going to post a link down of one of the places that I, I go, um, I hang out, and you know, God said I could share it with you guys. It, it's a personal place between me and Jesus, but I just wanted to give you guys just a romantic view of God and His intimacy with His children. Okay, so last night... You know, I asked this question. I was thinking so much about colleges and God, where am I supposed to go? You know, I can't make up my mind. I'm like this indecisive person. I cannot make up my mind. I will sit there for forever. Even during tests, I'll just sit there and I, I can't. Even though I know the right answer, I second guess myself. And it's so much harder because one of the biggest decision, decisions you make is for colleges. And like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Like, help me. Um... So it was like 1 a.m. I'm almost asleep, but I'm awake, right? So I go into this place that, you no, know, my secret place, okay? And, and Jesus and I got on a boat, okay? And he was rowing the boat. And the boat is in this, well, some water, right? And this, this path of water is like enclosed lane of water. I don't know, it's called a canal. Yeah. It's a canal no wider than 10 feet, maybe. And he's sitting backwards to where we go, and he's rolling, he's staring at me, and I'm sitting there. So basically, this is the boat. He's sitting here, I'm sitting here, he's rolling, and we're going this way. So, phew. Okay. So. And then we got off at this bench that was on the side of a mountain. And we started talking, and somehow I started talking about conscious. I just like going to that place. It's just a place of serenity. And I just go there, and I just blabber, I just bet, and I just talk to him. You know, if I don't feel like talking to him, just talking to plain air, you know, I, I go to that place. And so I asked him this question. Um, okay, so I shared it on my Facebook, that's why I'm reading it, okay? So, um, it's, and what I heard, you know, I will come out of it, and I, once I came out of it, I'll type everything down. So, I asked them, why does it take you forever, you know, sometimes, why does it take you forever sometimes? Meaning, like, to do things, to answer questions, you know, to let me know what, what, what I'm supposed to do. And he told me, um... He said, man has always thought everything revolves around them. And he says, it's all about me. Until you understand that my clock um, says forever, you will never learn patience. I was like, oh, okay. You know, I know there's a clock in heaven that has, uh, that says uh, forever on it, basically. Heaven is eternity forever. Um, okay, so... I sat there, I was like, oh, I'm trying to get out, and okay, let me calm myself, let me calm myself. And so I, no, I nodded, I tried to take that in. A bird came, and it was a dove. And on the side of the mountain, his hands were on his um, thighs, and the bird came to perch on his hand, and he lifted it up. And I was looking at it, and because the bird was a dove, I was like, is it the Holy Spirit? And he said, no, the Holy Spirit is in me for discernment. But he, so he was going to use this bird to teach me a lesson about listening to him and listening to his voice. Um, yeah, so the bird flew off his um, finger and started flying right in front of us. And it was like, it was like here and it was just flying. And you could see, not, you can't see air, right? You can't see wind. But you could see the wind and how the bird was trying to let the wind, you know, play with its wings. And that's how the bird was flying. And it was just the mechanisms, the mechanisms of how the bird was flying. It was patient with the wind. It wasn't fighting the wind or anything. And this is what Jesus, Jesus said. He says, my voice is the wind. Walk in this course and you will never get lost. Um, boats take the course of the wind, birds take the course of the wind. They do not fight it. A fool fights the wind and sticks his fist in thin air. 
that's what he said so like basically people you know who don't listen to his voice are always trying to fight his voice and then they end up like looking like fools because then they go off course you know not listening to him you know the bible says uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and jesus you know is the word of god so everything that comes out of jesus you know is the word and is truth so you know, as he was saying i was thinking okay there are so many people out there who do not have discernment in, in them and do not have patience with god's voice and listen and really take in what he's trying to say so that's what I was thinking about when he said that to me. And then he's, um, before he said anything else, he took my hand and we started walking, climbing this mountain that we were sitting, sitting on the side of. And the mountain had stairs on it. It was like so beautiful. It had this nice view of the sea on like the far side. And, you know, we were climbing the mountain. And we got to the top. And the top was a cliff. Okay, so guess what? I'm supposed to do now. It's like, uh, I ain't gonna die. <laughs> no more, no, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> okay, so I was really like, nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, what, what, what am I supposed to do now? This is a test. Like, I didn't expect him to test me immediately after seeing this bird fly and take course of the wind. You know, as he's saying that his voice is the wind. So we got to the cliff, and he said, "This, do not fight my voice." If you just listen, you will soar. You will not be tossed to and fro. Um, yeah, he said you will not be tossed to and fro. So I was like, it reminded me of James 1, 6. Talking about the guy who is unstable in his ways and is tossed to and fro like the wave, the sea, blah, blah, blah. And before you know, I entered this, he told me my assignment was James 1 and 2. So basically, he's teaching me James 1 and 2 and giving me a whole new perspective of stuff. So, I'm standing on the top of the cliff, okay, and now he's expecting me to step off the cliff and trust that I'm not going to fall down onto the water below where the boat is, okay? So, I'm like, and I mean, I know you're Jesus, but like, okay, no, I know he's faithful. He's taught me patience, like, you don't know, okay? I'm so gracious. A lot of people know that, like... I will sit there and have patience, and I'll be gracious to you, but, like, this time I'll test them, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Even though you stand, I'm like, right here, I'm so nervous, like, I don't want to, like, fail. So, then, I could see the wind. You see, as I saw the wind with the bird, I could see the wind coming. And the wind was coming, um, past me, and I knew that I was supposed to step off the cliff and just trust the wind, and I'll just not fight it. But swore, you know, just obey, you know, just let the wind take me where I wanted to go. So, as the wind is coming, I step off the cliff, and there I am floating in air. I am not falling, I'm there just standing in air, like I'm flying, but I'm vertical. It was so cool. And, yeah, and then he said this to me I promise you I'll never leave you or nor forsake you. I am underneath you. I am above you, beside you, and all around you. And as he was saying this, I don't know how to explain this. He was in those areas. So this is me. So as he say, I am underneath you. He's standing like right here. He's saying, I'm, I'm above you. He's standing right here. Beside you, he's standing right here, and right here, and all around you. You see all of him. He's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. You can see four of him, and he's just there, but he's one. And our minds cannot comprehend that, but that's what I saw, and I'm just trying to explain it the way I could. And that was basically it. So, just wanted to share with you James 1. Once I find it, I usually, <laughs> this is so embarrassing, I use my, my phone to read James, so... And it comes to like paper Bible and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna read the important parts. Okay, not important parts, but like the specific parts that you know. I'll start with the wind. Okay. So as I said, James one six. Um. Okay, I'll go to James one five. So if any one of you is lacking in wisdom, let him keep on asking God, 
for he, he, for he gives generously to all and without reproaching, and it will be given to him. But let him keep on asking in faith. Yeah, not doubting at all. Because if I doubt it, guys, um, yeah. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and blown about. In fact, let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from Jehovah. He is an indecisive man, unsteady in all his ways. Didn't I say I was indecisive? Like, I'm trying to break that so much. Like, in the indecisiveness and doubt are like, those are like my things that I need to like really, really trust Jesus and like exchange with faith with them, really. Um, and I want to read James. Uh, Yeah, there's something else. Okay, James 13. It says, When we're in the trial, let no one say, I am being tried by God. For whoever thinks God cannot be tried, nor does he insult so try anyone. But if he, each one is tried by being drawn out and enticed by his own desire, then the desire, when it has become virtual, gives birth to sin. In turn, sin, when it has stick accomplished, springs forth death. So let us not lean on our own desires. It, it eventually it leads to death. Um, and then there was something else. I think it was in, I guess, James 2. Uh, yeah, there was something else. Okay. And it's not just a basic you know, life lesson that we should all know. Um, James twenty, uh, James one twenty two. However, when doers... However, become doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves with false reasoning. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, this one is like a man looking at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and off he goes and immediately forgets what sort of man he is. But he who appears into the perfect law that belongs to freedom and who persists in it, this man, because he has become not a forgetful hearer, did I say the, um, his voice is the wind? And forgetful here, but a doer of the work, he will be happy in his doing of it. I was happy after, you know, I had faith in him and I asked for faith. You know, I didn't say God give me faith, but I knew I, I, I was asking in my spirit. And he gave me that faith to believe and step up in life. And James 2, I wanted to share with you about faith and works. Uh, okay, well, okay, James 2, 24, you see that a man is to be declared righteous by works and not by faith alone. If I had faith and I have works, you need both of them to work together. Uh, my works in this situation is stepping off the cliff, that's the action. The faith is believing that I could do it. And okay, in the same manner was not also Rahab the harlot declared righteousness, declared righteous by works after she had received the messengers host, host, hospitably, hospitably, and sent them out by another way. Indeed, as the body without spirit is dead, also faith without works is dead. So if I have works and I don't have faith, it's also dead. So. Basically, there's so many things that I learned from this. Faith without works is dead. Works without faith is dead. Do not be doubtful. Do not have. Do not be incisive. Just trust in Jesus. His voice is the wind. And if you just trust in Him, you will not fight the wind. And you will not say, oh, I'm going to listen to my own voice because I know what the heck I'm talking about. And you're going to be, you know, unstable in your own ways. And you're going to be taken off course. So basically, God, His Son, Holy Spirit, the, they are the voice. That you're supposed to be listening to know all the voices. But it says, my sheep know my voice. And, you know, trust in God in any way you can. Um, you know, if he leads me to share any other experiences I've had with him, it would be nice to share with you. Uh, I guess we're here to edify each other. And I hope you guys were blessed by this supernatural experience that I had.